What's going on guys and welcome back to another video and welcome to your stimulus package update and daily news report for Friday, January 28th. So we have a lot of stuff to get to. Let me break down what I'm going to discuss in today's video and then let's jump right into it. So a lot of people are actually being misled about a $2,000 stimulus check that could potentially be coming in the matter of weeks. I will explain what's going on here and give you the truth. We know one state's governor is offering a plan to give every resident a $150 rebate. I will address that later on as well. Progressives are asking the Senate to quickly pass a Build Back Better Act so that President Biden has something to share with the nation and explain how soon their relief will be coming soon after the State of the Union address. We know the White House is also planning a push for a COVID-related paid leave bill, and this would be very similar to which was enacted in the early days of the pandemic. We know lawmakers say that most Americans support student debt forgiveness and that President Biden needs to forgive this debt before it is too late. We're also going to address how lawmakers are also looking into passing a bill that would give taxpayers a break on penalties from the IRS due to delays in mail and just simple delays at the IRS. We also know that a bipartisan group of U.S. senators are writing a bipartisan bill to provide additional relief to Ukraine. And the hope is to act quickly and get relief to Ukraine within the next week. So that's what we're going to discuss in today's video. If you have any questions on any of this stuff, please ask your questions down in the comment section below. And again, I just want to thank you guys for watching. If you could and you enjoy these daily uploads, do me a favor. Go ahead, hit that like button. But let's get right into it. So $2,000 stimulus checks, they should be coming within the next couple of weeks. That's what we keep hearing and that's what the media keeps on telling us. Here's the problem. Many media outlets keep saying this is coming, but the truth is there's nothing in the works for a $2,000 stimulus check. Here's what is coming. There are additional $1,400 stimulus checks still going out to the American people that missed their checks back in 2021. So if you didn't get a $1,400 stimulus check, Every single person should have. So you would be getting that when you file your tax return. That's where $1,400 is coming from. There's still the second half of the child tax credit payments. This is still gonna be sent out. Nobody has received the full amount of the $3,000 or $3,600 payments. So you would either get a $1,500 check or you'd get $1,800. You'd get the second half of your child tax credit payments. That's where that's coming from. There's additional tax credits as well. There's childcare credits. Um, there's you know so many different things. But as for a $2,000 stimulus check, don't believe anybody that's telling you it's coming at this time because honestly, there is no talks of it. I look every single day, multiple times for hours, every single day of additional stimulus, relief, and honestly, there's nothing there for $2,000 stimulus checks. All those discussions are old and people are just bringing back old news. So just to give you an idea, there's nothing for a $2,000 stimulus check. However, there is one governor that has proposed a $150 tax rebate to all residents. And this is the governor of Wisconsin. He's also proposing sending $750 million for education. Here's the problem. Because both of these provisions were quickly blocked by Republicans. And according to reports, the reason for this is because Republicans don't believe passing an $150 tax rebate to all residents is a good idea right before the election. Again, the election <laughs> isn't for months, but that's what Republicans are saying. But this has also been proposed even by the last governor as well. But what this governor, Governor uh, Evers is saying, is he is saying that this is the Amer this is the the residents money this is the people's money and sitting on the people's money for another year and a half makes absolutely no sense and the reason for this money is because the state has a surplus of cash remember remember this because this is the reason i wanted to bring this all up is because as states have uh, a surplus of cash or they start to see that they recognize oh we got too much money what should we do well this is where they start to devise plans and they decide, oh, let's give it back to our residents. Let's give it to businesses. 
Let's give it to uh, certain cities so that they can have a guaranteed income program. But this is likely where those stimulus checks are going to come. So that's the reason I bring this up. Not because I have an overwhelming majority of people watching my channel from Wisconsin. Yeah, there's some. And if you're from Wisconsin, let me know down in the comment section below. But it's because other states are going to follow suit. Other states are going to do something very similar to this. So that's why I bring it up. And speaking of stimulus checks, this is what progressives still believe we need for the entire country. The only problem is there's not enough support within the Senate to get something like this passed. Right now though, the progressive party is calling on the Senate to get a Build Back Better Act passed before March 1st, when President Biden has his State of the Union address. Now I wanna bring this up and I wanna explain why I say a Build Back Better Act, because progressives as of right now, they know the entire agenda will not be passed. They say it, it would be better to have something done so that President Biden can take the time, because this would be an ideal time, according to them, for President Biden to applaud Congress for getting a bill passed. Not the bill, a bill passed. He could also use this time to tell the American people, this is what Democrats passed, this is what will be coming, and this is when you will be able to get it. So. They're saying that this would be an ideal time. Let's figure out a way to pass a bill before March 1st. So that's in like a month. Do I think it's going to happen? I don't. Do I think there's uh, going to be a push for it? I do. I just don't know how strong this push will actually be. So we will see. And we also know that Senator Joe Manchin, and I know a lot of you hate when I bring him up, but Senator Joe Manchin is very worried about inflation. I said this yesterday as well. I personally, after hearing the, the Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell speak on Wednesday, I personally am somewhat concerned about inflation as well because we're now starting to see inflation is broadening over the entire market, not just specific sections like uh, used cars and trucks and travel and energy. So if it broadens, that's gonna be very difficult to slow down and potentially stop. So we'll see what happens there. But like I said yesterday, we still don't know what provisions would even be in a, a bill that would have overwhelming support in both the, the House and the Senate. But we did learn today that the White House wants to pass COVID relief uh, paid leave. This is something that we've seen in the past. And they are saying right now that too many people are missing work like they did during the beginning stages of the pandemic. And it's at no fault of their own. So they want to provide additional help. Here's what they want to do. They wanted to provide about two weeks of COVID related sick pay. Okay. They also want to include 12 weeks of family and medical leave, but at two thirds pay. So this is a little bit of a difference. Instead of just four weeks of uh, paid family and medical leave at, at full pay, they just want to do two thirds pay, but for 12 full weeks. We don't know if there's going to be support there. I don't think there will be, but that could be their initial offer. And then we could come in at, okay, maybe not 12 weeks, but what about six weeks at two thirds pay, which is essentially four weeks. So we'll see, we'll see what happens, but it's interesting that they are trying to do something different now. However, though, instead of running this for the life of the pandemic, and this is where another big change comes in, that the discussions are that let's only do this for the next handful of months so that it's just enough time to get us out of this winter surge that we're currently in. So that's the discussion. 12 weeks at three thirds or at two thirds pay and also run this just for the next few, few months to get us out of the winter surge. That's really all the discussions are, but at least we're having discussions. That's the big thing. Also, President Biden has yet to answer the question as to whether or not we are going to see uh, up to $50,000 in student debt forgiveness. Lawmakers say that he does have the authority, but outside of that, nobody knows what President Biden is thinking. We did have the results though, uh, just recently from a poll from CNBC, and it stated that 81% of adults with student debt say they have had to delay key life milestones due to their debt. And another survey says that most Americans want President Biden to prioritize student debt forgiveness. Let me ask you this. Do you think that should be a priority? 
Now, some are saying that $10,000 would be better than 50,000. And as millions of people signed up for this debt, experts are saying they knew what they were getting themselves into. They got an education out of it. So there's absolutely no reason why the debt should be 100% forgiven. There should be a cap. So I don't know if this is even something that lawmakers would consider, but I read a, maybe it was a tweet. I don't remember who it was from, okay? It was a verified tweet, so it had to be from somebody. Um, somebody, not just a commenter. But this person brought up, what if there was a cap at like 60% of your debt? Okay, we're gonna give, we're gonna do up to you know ten thousand dollars in in uh, student debt forgiveness, but a cap of fifty percent. So if if you had twenty thousand dollars in student debt, you would get a fifty percent debt reduction, which would be ten thousand, which is also the cap. So somebody brought that up, and I was thinking, ah, maybe, I don't know, maybe, but we will see. But just to give you an idea, okay? I was looking into this because I thought, I wonder how many people that are in favor of forgiving student debt actually have student debt. It's also going back to the talks of, you know, parents with children, uh, they are in favor of the child tax credits, right? And these payments, people without children, usually not, because it is, uh, it's a benefit to them. But the majority of people who say forgiving student debt should be a high priority are actually between the ages of 18 and 57. So, they have had this debt for less time than the older generations, which also mean that they are most likely either just now starting to pay or have been paying very little for the last few years. Unlike people that are 60 years and older that either are almost done paying or they finish their, their payments, have been debt free and student debt for a while, and they're thinking, why should the, the younger generations get all this relief when we had to make our payments? So. We'll see what happens there as well. Lawmakers are also pushing to get the IRS some additional help. They say they would prefer to give the IRS more money and then uh, have the IRS hire more workers, but at this time, this does not seem like it's the likely option. The most likely option at this point is to reduce penalties on all taxpayers who are racking them up due to mail delays uh, and automatic um, penalties going out or penalty notices going out to these taxpayers. So the purpose behind this, okay, behind this move is that the IRS currently has about 15 million pieces of correspondence they have yet to even go through. Because of this, millions of Americans are getting automatic penalty notices and even liens. So what Congress wants to do is they want to step in, help alleviate some of these issues because we know the IRS is only going to get further backlogged. We know the American people are just going to keep getting these automatic notices, which is not going to be great. And we know there's going to be more calls into the IRS, more questions as to, hey, what's going on here? I mailed this over to you, you know, eight months ago. Why am I still getting this notice when it's just because of delays? That's it. So Congress is going to look into this. We will see what happens from there. And lastly, a group of bipartisan U.S. senators are working on a bill to provide relief to Ukraine. They say that while Russia is moving in, they need to act fast and provide relief within the next week. The goal is to simply help Ukraine, but also come to an agreement as to what sanctions they could potentially impose on Russia if or when we see a possible invasion. Now, I know this is gonna trigger a handful of people because we always see this, but lawmakers are rushing to pass a bill for other countries. But when it comes to our own people, the, the U.S. border, right, we wait, we see delays, and they delay as much as possible. And I understand that. You're probably frustrated, as am I. But that is what we know. That's what's going on right now. As always, as I know more, I promise I'll come back on and share all the latest news and updates. Again, I just want to thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys on the next one.